What do you think, Rifka? What was your... With Rabbi Friedman, it's always unexpected. Like we had this plan of where we wanted the episode to go, but the episode went kind of to a different place. I have a lot of clarity. I just feel at peace after speaking to Rabbi Friedman. And then also not to be scared of sharing the truth. Right. Yeah, not to be scared of sharing the truth, that that's going to come across as arrogant or misleading, but that truth is truth. And to know that truth is really from Hashem. And so you're not really making it all about you. You're sharing yeah. godliness. Yeah, truth is liberating. And the more you speak the truth, the more you you say what you believe to be true, the easier your life gets and the more empowered you're going to feel. The change yeah. that happens within you yeah. and the same way with enthusiasm, you. that's going to end up changing things around you. Yeah, confidence and truth. Is, and uh, that's how we can yeah. win the war. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for being here and let the conversation begin from the inside out. Welcome, Rabbi Friedman. Welcome back to our podcast. We had you once on Zoom. I think it was towards the end of COVID, was it? So that's why we, right. now, we, well, now we have you live, which is very exciting. And if you ever want to go back to that episode, it's amazing. It is called Why We Are Here? I think so, yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. We actually also had you on a panel with Rabbi Shays Taub and Rabbi Simon Jacobson, which was amazing as well. So if you want to go back and listen to that. And today we are here to discuss with you how to win a war. This is the book that Rabbi Friedman just came out with, to win a war. We wanted to discuss how to win a war the Jewish way in Israel and also how to win the war within ourselves and our own lives and the, in the wars that we battle. Well, we wanted to open up with saying that we spent some time together a couple of weeks ago where we were all brought out together and it was on, an honor to be with you, which perhaps we can get into as well. Is that part of the war? <laughs> it's part of the war. It all started there. <laughs> And we wanted to know your impressions. We just released an episode with Sapir Cohen, which, who was a hostage in Gaza, and we were so inspired by her. She was brought out to Scottsdale, Arizona as well, by Beth Tefilla. And we wanted to know what your takeaways were. What was your impression? I was completely humbled by the whole thing. 55 days a hostage, and she carries herself with such dignity and such simplicity. Awesome. We feel like children compared to her. Now, we, the things we complain about and the things we worry about, very humbling. It is humbling. It gives you hope for humanity. Makes me feel like why does life have to get difficult for people to wake up and start appreciating the things that matter? Well, that's the Lubavitch slogan of Lachat why do you have to wait for an emergency to show how strong you are? Without the emergency, you're just as strong. So, why do you have to wait for the... Yeah. Now, the interesting thing is, though, is that the purpose of the world is to bring light to the darkness. So, I guess it makes sense that it would take a dark time for us to reveal the light within us. And, oh, in that sense, since creation, the world has been dark. You don't need any more of an emergency than that. That's true. So we have the darkness. <laughs> right. So any, anyone who believes in repairing the world in Tikkun Olam has declared war. Right. If, if, the, if the status quo is not acceptable and something has to change, that's war. That's the war that is necessary and and justified and 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 noble when it deteriorates to bombs and bullets uh, it's not so nice but war as a as a subject as an idea the whole idea of creation is remove the negative bring in the positive that's war so we wake up in the morning and we're at war unless you think this is as good as it gets and you're fine with it that's not acceptable. So war doesn't have to be a negative term. No, war is a definition of life. Definition of growth, accomplishment. If, if you say it's got to be better than this, you've declared war. That gives us permission to, to battle whatever weaknesses and... and um, issues that we have because that's maybe where the war needs to be fought 
for someone who didn't experience something at the level of, you know, what Sapir did. Yeah, so a person who says, everything's fine, just let's all just get along and live and let live. You gave up the battle. And that's, that's a failure. The question is, when, when to pause? When is that time to say, just live and let live? Never. Well, it could be, to, you know, sometimes if someone's done something hurtful to you and um, you feel like maybe, I don't know, maybe that wouldn't be a time to speak up and just let, let go and let live. All right, so that's your strategy. You're fighting the war. You haven't given in. So it's not really a pause. It's, it's a strategy. Sometimes even with, uh, retreat is part of the strategy. But you don't, you don't quit. So in this book, I didn't see a lot of retreat. There wasn't really a retreat option to win a war. What would you say? How would, in a nutshell, maybe you can share with us, how can we win the war in Israel today? Well, I, I think what, what's going on demonstrates so convincingly that there really is no wisdom out there without the Torah. There's just no wisdom. It's embarrassing to consider what is suggested and what is considered wisdom, morality, strategy for war. It's so embarrassing. Like, for example, this noble idea of proportionate response. Proportionate response is so childish. Oh, you hit me twice, I only hit you once. Yeah, that's not fair. That is so childish. If you really had proportionate response in a war, the war would never end. Right. How do you win a war? You do more than your enemy. If you do exactly what your enemy does, it's, it's so embarrassingly inane. What does Torah say? And it's so obviously true and, and brilliant and moral. It's immoral to say, respond proportionately. Where's the morality in that? Hit me, I'll hit you. Hit me, I'll hit you. Where, where's the morality? Proportionate means not proportionate to what the enemy did, Proportionate means proportionate to the pursuit of peace. What does it take to bring peace? Because if you're not fighting a war in order to bring peace, then you're just a warmonger and there's no hope for you. The reason for fighting a war is to bring peace. If I can bring peace by killing one person, then I'm not allowed to kill two. <laughs> That makes so much sense, and it's so moral. Why are you killing two people when you can have peace after killing one? If killing one person will not bring peace, then you can't settle for that. So here's how immoral this whole thing is. You start a war, two sides, there's fighting, there's, right? and it reaches a number that makes you uncomfortable. Oh, we've killed 20,000. Oh, that's a lot. Okay, we've got to stop now. What happens if you stop now? You're not bringing 20,000 people died for nothing. You're so worried about a 20,000? No, you're not. You're willing to throw them under the bus after, they, after they're no longer alive? And say, okay, we wasted 20,000, but we shouldn't waste 30,000. You wasted? This is moral? So there are two things. If by killing one person you can end the war and have peace, then don't kill two. But if it takes 30,000 to end the war and you've killed 20,000, 
it would be immoral to stop. Because until you've breached peace, people have died for nothing. So proportionate means not proportionate to how many times you hit me. That's so childish. That's like a kids arguing in a, in a schoolyard. Tit for tat. Yeah, it's, it's right. so embarrassingly. But the objective to obtain peace, if that is your guiding light, then yes, you will behave proportionately. Proportionate to the peace. It makes so much sense. It is so moral. That's godly wisdom. If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic and you're looking for more information or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal, it's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program, there's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So. Join us. Take a look. Click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best. And join us for some enjoyable conversation.